Welcome to Marketplace in Action. Giving you hope for your following purposes. Breaking down the word to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith for those promises. Good evening, and welcome to Marketplace in Action. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Ken. With me, as always, is Pastor Anthony. Hello, hello. We have a lot of special guests. We want to jump right into it. But I want to thank you. Today is tomorrow unless you learn something new. And that's what we do here at Marketplace. I want to thank you for letting us in your living room for these next 25 minutes or so. I hope we deposit something that will change your life forever. Our heart here at Marketplace is real solutions for the tough problems we face in the marketplace. So today at Marketplace, the prayers we bring to our viewers, we hope will be take you from the ordinary to the extraordinary. That's our heart. I know this, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, Pastor and I talk about this all the time. Passively is the opposite of activity, and that's, we want to talk about mindsets tonight, but we have a different twist. Uh, I want to bring Pastor Anthony on. I want to jump right into our special guest. It's 1 Peter 5 eight. God's Word teaches us to be alert but cautious and be active to stir up the gift that's within us, 2 Timothy 1.6. So Pastor Anthony, we were out the other night sharing a little bit. Uh, God himself says, man is very good, Genesis 131, but it's his spirit in us. Now, I want to I bring Pastor in on this, and, and please, if you're taking notes, please, and I quote the scriptures, so the address is for you, so you know where God is in the Bible, so you can study and get the revelation for yourself, because it'll just be here if you hear my words or Pastor's words, but we want it here so you own it and you can give the revelation to others and share, and that's why ministry is, to serve others. But his, he put his spirit, this is really heavy, listen to this. His spirit is put in us, but there's other spirits, God himself is a spirit, and spirit of the world that's able to communicate with us. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 12. What does that mean? Okay, so God's spirit's in us and we're saved, right? Now there's the spirit of the world, remember the world has a spirit, but this is what the fad is, what the latest cult is, what the latest thing is, it's of course, the spirit of the prince of the airways, that's Satan. So we have to be very, very careful. We're in tune with him, or otherwise we'll be cut off with the culture. Pastor, you see this all the time in your ministry and your taping and what you do uh, prophetically and, of course, uh, your ministry and making movies and so. Share with us what the spirit of the world is. What does that mean? Well, the spirit of the world, it's very sad. And even in our churches, it's, there's so many people that have we have our own spirit inside of us. We are yes. led, because the hardest journey like that we must mm -hmm. take is that, get that knowledge. You were just talking about the knowledge, but it needs to be in our heart. Yes, that's right. And there's people that know the Bible inside and out better than any of us here. They know every word. They've that's memorized right. it, just like the Pharisees did in Jesus' time. Ooh, they they knew the word so well, and they'd look at people and say, you're not doing right. This is, look at you're not obeying the word, blah, blah, blah. And Jesus comes and says, you idiots, it's not, a, it's not supposed to be, in your, it's supposed to be in your hearts. And because if it's in your head, that doesn't do anything. You'll still Amen. be led. It has to be in your hearts because what is in your heart is where, where you're led by what is in your heart. So right now in the world, we have a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge, but they have their own desires and their own addictions and their own That's things right. that they want is in their heart. We follow our hearts. And the misconception, I think, and what we don't think about a lot is... We think for like the casual Christian, the people that just go to church, we might have something else in our hearts. We think, okay, well, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven because I filled the card out at the you ah, know, summer camp 30 so years true. ago. That's good. But <laughs> it's, it can't be like that. We have to have, because Psalm says that the word of God, if it's in our hearts and it leads us to eternal life, not in our heads, it doesn't matter how many times we memorize the scripture, mm -hmm. but if it's in our hearts, because it's that innate action, the first thing you think of when calamity happens, when crisis happens, it's that spirit 
that will guide us and lead us. So we need to get more of God's word into our hearts instead of just in our minds. That is so good, Pastor. Well done. Now, Job 32, 8, and I want to bring my special guest in. There is a spirit in man because the breath of the Almighty gave him understanding. That's how we know who he is and what he wants us to do and the spirit of wisdom comes upon him and knowledge. That's what the spirit is. It's actually the spirit of power. It's wisdom. It's knowledge. It's his character that comes in us at the mind of Christ so we know where he wants to go with this. And that's where the power comes, if you want to use the power, but we'll get into that later. Now, this spirit is synonymous with heart and mind like Pastor talked about. It's the intelligent, not the physical, but it allows us to think, reason, and comprehend. Now, verse 11, I'll bring Pastor Jeff in, teaches us personal spirit is a source to oversee our thoughts. In other words, that's in our heart, the spirit to oversee. This spirit in man is not another being. It's within a person, but it's simply a person, the center of reasoning of what God is saying. Let me bring in Pastor Jeff. I want to say we had such a great time. We spoke at his pursuit. He's just a powerful man of God, extremely prophetic, moves in healing, a great teacher. We just had such a great, I got so much testimony about him at that meeting. Pastor Jeff, share with us what's on your heart about this mindset. Yeah, I just feel like we can acquire knowledge. And we go to the church service after church service. Pastor Anthony was talking about this. We can acquire knowledge. But if we want true revelation, see, revelation is applied knowledge. And so if you want to walk in a greater understanding, you have to start applying it. So you don't truly know the word until you live the word. Mm. And see, our minds are the gatekeepers to the supernatural. What does that even mean? It means what, what is keeping your mind locked? Uh, these, these mindsets that we were talking about, the things of the world, these, mm -hmm. it's stopping you. You're the only one that can stop you from walking in the supernatural. That's good. And so my question tonight, and, and we can open it up for discussion, is what's keeping your mind locked? If, you're, if your mind is the gatekeeper to the supernatural, it's, it's what's bringing the breakthrough. What is keeping your mind locked? What have you allowed to hinder you? Or who? Maybe it's a person. That's good. You know, what's, this, what's going on? We talked about the spirit. And so I just, you know, what, what is stopping us? That's so good. Now, I want to say this. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, and I want to come right back to you. The spirit of the world, that in the Greek is translated orderly systems. Now, watch this. It's motivating us. It's an impulse of the culture of which we can manifest in many ways, but it's always anti-God. That's what Pastor's talking about. That's in Romans 8, 7. You can look it up for yourself. Also in Ephesians 2, 23, Paul says, once, a wa uh, once walk according to the course of this world. The course meaning mindset. In other words, once walk according to the mindset of this world. So the worldly spirit moves people who God has redeemed, who, who has not redeemed, I'm sorry, to, uh, in the contact of lust and desire of his own flesh. Now, verse 12, and I want to bring Jeff back into this, reveals the world has a spirit like the spirit man in us. The spirit is also not a separate being, but its use of spirit is slightly different. Whether that it's the center of reasoning, the spirit of the world is an attitude it talks about it's an atmosphere, it's a mood, it's a mind frame. So in the worldly system, that gets us caught up on all kinds of things. Wouldn't you agree in your meetings? Mm -hmm. it's, it's what's holding us back. And I wrote this down, and I just feel like it ties in. The mind must be transformed from an earthly, natural, and reasonable thinking that can sometimes, a lot of times, hold us back from a lifestyle of faith and heavenly thinking that releases the kingdom. And so it's these things of the world, with these things, you know, oh, I broke my phone, I, you know, my job is, it, it's these mm -hmm. things of the world that are holding us back from living a faith-filled life. And so we get caught up in the things of this world, but we know in Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to the, to the patterns of this world, but ye, ye transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind, That's that cool. by the testing you may discern, you may discern, that's a key, mm. the will of God. Mm -hmm. What is good and acceptable, acceptable for you? And so if you want to discern, you, how do you discern? You've got to spend time. 
Yeah, you got to spend time. You got it's a relationship, people. Like you you're not going to get it unless you know you spend time in his presence. How do you get renewed? You get in his presence. Amen. In his presence there's fullness of joy. You become who you were created to be when you become when you get in his presence. You can't be anyone else. They're already taken. <laughs> you know, you can't become anyone else. So why don't you just get in the presence and stop being a fake I, I see so many people, you know, they dress a certain way, you know, me, uh, Pastor Anthony and I were talking about this, even in the church, they, they, they have to act a certain way, oh, I'm going to youth group, I'm, I'm, I, have to, I have to look this way, I got to be this way, but if you got into the presence of the living God, you would see who you were created to Come be, on. and then you would actually release act kingdom, like yeah. act like it, you would release right. the kingdom. Well, Pastor Anthony, what do you think? A lot of times in the New Testament, the word for world, if you go back in the Greek, and it actually is system. That's, That's good. the actual word. Yes. And it's so funny because I hate when I hear this. I shouldn't say I hate, but I just, it, <laughs> I think there's so much more when people say, you hear this a lot. Well, that's just the way it is. That's just the way Good things word. are. What are you going to do about it? And you know what's funny is that the same thing th that Israel was going through in the Old Testament is they have Yahweh as their God. But they had allowed so many other gods and systems, worldly systems, to come in and govern their lives. When God says, no, I'm al I alone am your protector. I alone am your provider. I am alone in your proprietary shelter. It is me, not other people. And, well, that's just the way it is. We need our secular government to have this law and order. We need this and this, and we turn to our this for that. And, that was, and that's why we have rendered ourselves power, powerless. And that's Israel would go to Yahweh when they're in dire need. Oh, we need, you know, desperate need. But on their day-to-day -day lives, they had all these other worldly systems and worldly little G gods that they would turn to. And that's why, and God just looks at them and says, these prostitutes, these whores, they've whored around on me. They're not being faithful to me for all of their needs. That's they're good. coming and they're going to all these other places when they should be coming solely to me. And that's what's wrong with our churches. That's what's wrong with our world is we have all these people who claim to love God and God we love you more than anything else and we sing the songs and go to the church but when push comes to shove we look and there's so many other worldly things that rule our lives and God doesn't want that it's time to get rid of that it's time to abandon all of that and say God you are all we need that's it yeah. pastor Jeff can you want to comment yeah I just really feel this on my heart second Corinthians five seventeen through 19 it talks about you know, we're, we're transformed, we're, this, we're a new creation, the old things have passed away, and that Jesus Christ has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, okay. Check this out. So that word, um, ministry of reconciliation, I'm like, what is that if I have this ministry that I'm beginning? Actually, you can translate it back to restore the divine favor. So every situation, whether it be governments, whether it be schools, if I go in there, I'm going in there to restore the divine favor that once yeah. was taken away in the garden, which we read. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, has given it back to me. And now I'm going in with that mindset to go and transform, to release the kingdom and know that I have dominion because Christ has yeah. given it to me. Yeah. And I'm walking in that. And we're seeing it manifest all through the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, you guys saw it. You guys were there on Friday. I mean, people are turning back to God, and that's what's yeah. exciting. They realize yeah. their mistakes and they realize their prostitution, so to say, and turning to other things. And we're really seeing an awakening in a lot of young people, which yeah. is awesome. They're tired of the way things are, on, and man. we want to give our hearts solely yes. to the Lord for all of our trust, all of our needs, yeah. all of our blessings. We want to look to God. For let, that. let me make this comment. That's, I, yes. I just love where this is going. Yes, but this is good. The Father and Son are one, not in the sense that the same being. But what you two are saying, it's a sense of being perfect. You ignite it with his will, his thought, his intent. They have the same mind, same heart, same spirit. It's the spirit that we receive when we're baptized by laying on hands. And I saw you, Pastor Death, do that a lot, to understand the results of what God is teaching us, what God is saying through us. So on that note, I want to bring in Pastor Wayne. It's, a, it's on with us all the time. Pastor Wayne, in your ministry, do you see the same thing happening all the time in the world system? Yeah, I'd just like to say it's wonderful to be on set with these the young people that, that are, that are uh, blazing a, a trail for us to even sometimes follow. You know what I mean? When yes. they get on fire, you know what I mean? It, it changes, like, it gives the, old, the older generation, like, man, I, I'm fired up because they're fired up. 
And, right. and, and just to see the joy and the peace of Jesus and them praying and talking about mindsets. And, 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 and you know, the world is, 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 it sucks, really, to tell you the truth. And you know what I mean? Because they, they give you candy-coated poison. You know what I'm saying? It, it looks good on the outside, but it's got poison on the inside. And these guys all figured it out. And, and, and they're sitting here saying, you know what, I'm going to love God until the day I die. And, and, and I'm not running, I'm not stopping in my race. And this is what we need to, to say, hey, you know, you don't have to do your drugs. You don't have to go That's drink to, to get happy. We already have the happiness within our, ourselves. And, and we like to spread the fire, spread it out to people. You know, it's like we used to do when we get high. We don't get people high. Now, now we get people high in the Holy Ghost and, and giving them the new wine, giving them <laughs> stuff that doesn't leave a hangover, stuff that, that, is, that is truly the peace. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, you can't get peace in the world. Yeah. We know the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Come on. So Man. what you're saying is, that's really good, Pastor. <laughs> Second Peter 2, 3. False teachers are themselves driven by covetousness that desire to get something for themselves, power over people, popularity, money. This proves they're not led by the Holy Spirit. Holy, of course, meaning different. I want to bring in the prophetess herself. Please tell us what your view is. Um, honestly, the thing that keeps popping into my mind, and we talked about this before, I'm just going to read it. It's 2 Corinthians 10. Um, it starts mm. in 4, and then it goes to 5, but it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty before God to the casting down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every Man. high thing that Come is on. exalted against the knowledge of God, and Man. bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And I know for me, like, it's something that God has really been working in my heart about um, just really focusing on the thoughts that, yeah. that come into my mind and knowing that I have authority, knowing that I have dominion over those thoughts. Yes. And not yeah. just that, but it says tearing down strongholds. So yeah. like you're saying about mindsets, like nah, that's good. the same thing, the mindset and the stronghold and how we have that authority in us to tear those things down. Yes. And not mm. just us personally, but that we can do that in ministry to other people. Uh, so people who are, are really struggling or thought uh, in their own thought process or mindsets of themselves, we have that authority to take captive those those strongholds tear those strongholds down yeah. mm -hmm. but it's that Freedom. it's that yeah and it's that thought of we can take that thought captive mm -hmm. it doesn't powerful. have to stay there we can take yeah exactly yeah, right exactly that is yeah. really good so what you're saying is sometimes in deuteronomy 13 and it's the whole chapter false prophets through the power of satan can accomplish signs and wonders i mean just like the music magicians at the time of Egypt. I'll show you where it is, Exodus 7, 8, and 12. It talks about the miracle with Moses' staff uh, with Pharaoh. So we have to be careful just because they move in signs and wonders. I know in Acts, Simon actually tried to buy the power of God. Wow. Uh, that doesn't mean it's God. But I want to say this. The Apostle John test says, test all spirits because false prophets are, have gone out in this world. 1 John 4, 1. Does the prophet lead people to the true God? Does the prophecy in God's name or another's name? Does the second thought would be, does words come to pass? Jeremiah 28, 8, 9. Does signs and wonders be, are fulfilled in a godly way? The fourth is, do they teach truth based on God's word? Now, I know the prophet here, Jonathan, has gave, told me about a word he wanted to give you folks, and I think this will bless you. It blessed me. Jonathan, what was that word you were yeah, giving us? I just had a prophetic word okay. uh, to the youth pastors. Okay. And it's in Joshua 22 in the message. Okay. It says, when Joshua sent them off to their homes, he blessed them. He said, go home. You're going home rich. Great herds of cattle, silver and gold, bronze and iron, huge piles of clothing. Share their, the wealth with your friends and families all this plunder for you, from your enemies. And just with that thought, I think I just speak that out right now prophetically that people that are watching this, that, that are, have influence under them, is going to go home rich yeah. spiritually. And I feel like you're just going to impart those things to, the, to other people that's under you. Yeah. And so just go home with that. 
that you are rich and you're prosperous. Mm -hmm. Have a mindset of that. Because it's a mindset. It's a mindset of whether we're, we're poor. Some people have, oh, I'm poor. I'm a nobody. But no, the word of God says you're rich. Mm -hmm. You dwell in high places. And so I just want to leave with that. Oh, wow. Powerful word. That was really good. Mm. My prayer to all of you, and I'll bring Pastor Jeff back in. We're closing with the last five minutes. Is it says in Psalms 119, 125 in the message, I'm your servant. Help me understand what that means. The inner meaning of your instructions. It's time to act, God. I think it's a powerful prayer. I want to bring you back in, Pastor Jeff, and your ministry. What do you see the pursuit, pursuit going to? Where do you see it going to? You know, our heart is just really to activate, it's to build a community. Yeah. Um, you, so many times in, in moves of God, we've seen uh, the focus be on a man or woman on this platform. And I really believe God is doing something profound. Yeah. You yeah. see this with the School of Supernatural Ministries raising up in all churches across the body of Christ. And I believe what God is doing, he's, he's taking... I, I believe there was always power in the pews, but I believe the focus is going off the pulpit to the pews. That's and right. I believe, like, mm -hmm. God is just... He's, he's, what it is, is it's a mind shift. There's, people are actually being raised up to know that it's not just an anointed man or woman of God that's on the platform. I can go out and see the exact same things. Amen. I can go out, and, right. and the loudest, I always say this, the loudest gospel message we'll preach is the way we live our life. And, and I was telling um, someone before this show is, before we prophesy with our words, let's prophesy with our life. Let's go out and live this life. Let's go out and live the word of God. And that's my heart is to raise and build a community is say, hey, maybe you're in brokenness, but let's move you to boldness. Maybe you, you're coming in and you barely have hope, but let's, let's move from brokenness to boldness and get you on that battlefield and send them out. That's our heart. That's our commission to go out and do the things. I mean, Mark 16, 17 says, this, just hold on to this. Mark 16, 17 says, these signs will follow those that believe in my name. Now, it doesn't say the pastors. It doesn't say the super good looking. It says those that believe in the name of Jesus, these signs will follow. They will lay hands on the sick. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. So why is my life not looking like that? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Why does your life not look like that? That's what God asked, that challenged me. The Holy Sp I read that verse, it wrecks me, man. You ever read the Bible and it wrecks you? Like, I mean, I read it all the time, I'm like, Lord. But that's what the word is. It's, it's a two-edged sword. It's meant to cut sometimes. You've got to cut away that flesh. So, so what I'm you're just, saying, that is power. Yeah. We're going to bring him back next week, so <laughs> make sure you stay tuned. Let me close with two words, and, and Pastor Anthony's going to show us how to, you can get a touch of something. I want to hear from you. We're going to bring Pastor Jeff back. He's just so powerful. Uh, Hosea 12, 13, this is for Pastor Jeff. The Lord used a prophet to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt, in other mm. words, out of bondage. He used a prophet to take care of them. That's Thank what he's Lord. saying. Second thought. Uh, Zechariah 9, 12 in the NLT, all prisoners who Thank are still Jesus. in hope. Hope does not disappoint, remember that. No. I no. promise this very day that I'll repay twice the blessings yeah. of each of your troubles. <laughs> so, Pastor Anthony, how can they get a hold of us? How can they write to us? How can they get their prayers to us? Prayers to us, you could write to us at write to marketplace at gmail.com. Our website is marketplace in action. Dot org or on Instagram or Twitter at right to MIA. I just want to add that if you Please. feel if you have a bad mindset, you can always find people to strengthen that. Mm -hmm. You can if there's victim mentality, it seems what's going on everywhere is you can always find people to say, yeah, that's right, you know, and agree with you. But if you don't like your mindset, want to change it, get around people who have the right mindset. That's right. It's not hard to find them. If you're you, if you're looking for it, that's what you will find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, excellent point. I just want to challenge you until next week. Get into that word. Every scripture that we quote, that's why we quote the scriptures, that you can stand on, that you can actually get it in your heart to be your own. Now you can use those words to minister to others. We minister to serve. That's what it means in the Greek, to serve. So I want to encourage each and every one of you that is watching the show to don't take I word for it. Get into that book. Start reading what God has. There's so many promises. There's 790, it says. I believe there's 3,000, depending on if it's negative or positive. You can turn them around if they're negative to be positive, the opposite of. I'm not adding to the Bible. I'm just saying what it says. 
I encourage you to get into it and understand what the promises are for you for a better life, to have more money. Jesus died poor so us to be rich. Jesus was at the stripes, you are healed. This is what God has for us. So I'm asking you now, step out and do what the Word says. Until next week, Dr. Ken, Pastor Anthony, my special guest, we'll be back next week. Until next time, God bless you. Let us hear from you. Write to us. Let us hear. Until next